So shalom everyone, this is Amir Tsarfati and I am live from Auckland, New Zealand. Um, the largest city of New Zealand, of, it is on the northern island of the two main islands of this country. Last night we had the last major public meeting which was amazing over 600 people showed up to a church that normally gets 200 people. Um, the pastor came to me at the end and he said, Amir, even when the U uh, Israeli ambassador, when he came to speak here, we, we didn't even have half of the people that came to hear you. You should run to be an ambassador. And I shared with him that my dream as a child was to be an ambassador of Israel. And little did I know that God had other plans for me. And I believe that what I'm doing right now is sort of being an ambassador, but it is way more beautiful to be an ambassador for Christ than for uh, politicians. So I'm very excited. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is this. Uh, we're going to pray, and then I have very, very exciting announcements and some news for you. So let's start. Father, I thank you so much. I thank you so much that you have sustained me and brought me forth to this moment where I can say <laughs> it is finished um, when it comes to this tour. Um, I didn't think it, it would be so amazing and so overwhelming. But by your grace and in spite of who I am and in spite of my very limited strength and even the condition of my lower back and the extensive travel hours on the plane and on the ground, you showed up big time and every place was jam-packed and the people that you brought were super excited when they came and super encouraged when they left. And it is not because of me, it is because of your word. It is your word that said to tell each other, to speak of these comforting words. Therefore, comfort each other with these words. And these words are about the fact that you never destined us to the wrath of God and that you are about to come and take us out of here. These are the words of your soon judgment upon the world, yet of your love and compassion to your church. These are the words of warning to the world and comfort to your people. So I thank you, Father, that through beholding Israel and understanding what you are doing in the Middle East in these last days, we can, we can get much comfort and encouragement. We thank you so much for your word. Your word is it's like water to thirsty souls. Your word is a lamp unto our path and a light unto our way. You are the one who created the heavens and the earth and all that are in it. You are the one who made us and we are yours to serve you and worship you as Psalm 100 says. So I thank you from the end of the earth, from Oakland, New Zealand, from probably the place I traveled the longest to get to in order to teach your word. And I can only be at all at what you have done. So I thank you and I bless you today. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm sorry, I'm... A little bit emotional here, but um, this this has been a above and beyond anything I've ever expected. And um, last night was um, beautiful because not only that so many people showed up, but um, I've never seen such a display of unity here as we've seen there. And uh, it was it was so beautiful and. At the end of the message, after I talked about uh, the faithfulness of God, 
in how he brought us back to the land after 2,000 years and after he took us from this amazing danger of uh, annihilation that Psalm 83 is displaying the portion of Israel in 1948. We were a country that was so helpless at the time. And how within such a short time, we are the eighth strongest country in the world. And it was such a beautiful thing to, at the very end, um, somebody told me, there are people here in the crowd and they are the grand or oh, the great grandchildren of Lord Balfour, the one who gave the declaration uh, to Lord Rothschild in, 19, in 1917, uh, the Balfour Declaration that basically allows uh, the Jewish people to go back to Israel as their homeland. And here you are, born of the tribe of Judah, born in Jerusalem, in teaching God, of God's faithfulness. And here they are, the great-grandchildren of Lord Balfour, right here, sitting right here, listening to your teaching. And I was thinking to myself, what a, I don't think there's a greater proof of God's faithfulness than having myself and all of them it was the two grand, great grandchildren and the great great granddaughter of Lord Balfour that were right there standing with me. And uh, I don't understand how people cannot see God. How do, you know, I don't understand. This is what Behold Israel is all about. You look at Israel and you see God. You see Him in action. There is no way this country could have ever existed. There is no way this nation could have, ever, could have ever come back to life. There is no way this language could have ever been revived. There is no way. And here we are standing today, having alliances with African countries, with European countries, with Asian countries, being the greatest friend of America, being a wonderful ally of Russia. And I know Russia will come against us. But at the moment, right now, the Russian president is looking at the Israeli prime minister as someone whom he admires. At the time, at this moment, we are a, a technology superpower. We are energy superpower. And these are not things that we can take for ourselves. This is not, this is not us. We've made 180 degrees, full swing from the prey of the neighboring Arab countries to being sought after by most of the world. And this is not us. This is God. Because to get to, to, to Ezekiel 38, to, to be the, the, the object of, of great countries coming to steal from us and take from us and, and, take, and, and plunder this is because of God, and we are watching it, and we are watching God in its mightiest move since the time of Jesus Christ. We are the generation that have seen more things happening, more things fulfilled than any other generation since the time of Jesus. And it just breaks my heart to see people so lost, you know, in the middle of of my message last night um, when I was talking about how God answered the prayers of so many Christians in America and how Donald Trump was elected and there was a liberal uh, long-haired young liberal that stood up he says he is misogynist in the middle of of the service and and I looked at him and I, I said he no he is not and you know what he is the answer for prayers for so many and I looked at this guy who came all the way to church and he's so misinformed, he's so brainwashed by the media nights, by the media. 
He is so blind and I see millions of people all around the world. They call themselves Christians, but they allow the media to brainwash them. They allow the liberals to just completely destroy their pure, simple understanding of, of reality. And I'm, I'm just so, so shocked. And you know what? I'm the last person to defend Donald Trump's past. But I'm the first one to defend his present. And what he's been doing ever since he was elected for the sake of the family, for the sake of Christianity, for the sake of the unborn, and for the sake of Israel, it's unprecedented. It's unheard of. There is no president in the history of the United States that has ever done even half of these things. And how dare Christians come and attack him? Now, what about his past? Horrible. But my past is horrible too. And yours too. And I just don't understand how come we judge a president for his past and not for his presidency. And, and I don't, I'm not an American and I'm not a, you know, I'm not a Republican. I don't even like politics. But I, I, I see things and I, I, I see God in action. And the same way God is doing things right now there, He's using Him to do things in Israel. He's using Him to sh reshape the Middle East. He's using world leaders to completely do what He wants. It's so amazing. You know, the message title last night was, Who Really Controls the Middle East? By the way, you can go to YouTube. We already posted it there. Who Really Controls the Middle East? And all those empires that thought they controlled it. It was, it, it's a joke. Psalm 2 says that the Lord is laughing at all of them. They come against Him. They think that they can do things themselves. They think that they can do things their way. God even in Ezekiel 38, it is God who is going to allow the Russians in. He is going to say, God says, I will bring you into my land. So the nations will know that I am God. So it's very, very, I, I was so, I mean, of course, the, I, I did not expect to be attacked by that guy. But, um, but of course, I told him, hey. Mister, you sit down and listen because I'm the one who flew thousands of miles away to speak here. So you're 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 listening, and I'm I'm not speaking. And and uh, eventually they escorted him outside. But it was an amazing, amazing evening, amazing evening. And I just want to tell you that uh, the enemy is really trying hard. I mean, not only that he brought that guy all the way from Stockholm, Sweden, to tackle me in Japan. Now this guy here. And now I just found out yesterday, we've, we've noticed that our YouTube channel, although we're almost at 110,000 subscribers, the views have, have plunged and our, our Facebook views have skyrocketed. And so I was wondering what is going on here. And quick investigation showed us that tens of thousands of you guys have been unsubscribed from our YouTube channel without you even knowing. We were shocked to find out. So, so if you go to your YouTube channel and make sure you subscribe uh, back or resubscribe to Behold Israel because you don't even know, but you have been unsubscribed. You've been removed by YouTube uh, without you knowing. And you know the enemy is really trying hard from every direction. But we can see the schemes of the devil and we can easily detect it. And you, of course, you can go back and 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 resubscribe and 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 watch watch messages. And you know, it's not just the updates. These updates are nice, but my heart is that you will watch the doctrine, that you will watch the messages, the Bible teachings. This is the thing that will make you grow. You know, Middle East current events updates are nice. It may inform you of what's going on. But what will make your uh, relationship with God stronger is actually studying the Word of God. So I strongly recommend that you go and watch the messages about. I just posted the messages on the, the message on the temple. Where is what is when is the next temple? What is the temple at all? I took people all the way from Genesis, all the way to Revelation to show them 
We didn't have a temple in the Garden of Eden, and we will not have a temple in the New Jerusalem. And the earthly temples that we had started pretty well, but very, very fast. God actually was not there anymore. So you're going to watch it and be blessed. But the message last night, you can watch it as well. Who really controls the Middle East? And um, it will really help you. I'm so happy also to tell you that we just released my first book. It's called The Last Hour. The last hour. It's an Israeli insider looks at the end times. We released it. It's on our website, beholdisrael.org, on the resource store. You can see the books and you can order it. And within a couple of days, you'll get not only the book, but also a sticker that says, I am a watchman. I just want everybody to be aware of their responsibility and mandate to be watchmen. So we, we gave you this sticker, and of course it's from Ezekiel 33, verses 1 and 2, and you can put it on, your, on the bumper of your car, and everybody will know that, that you are a watchman. So uh, let's, go, um, let's go back a few days to what's going on in the Middle East, because I, I have to warn you against uh, some things. So first of all, a um, couple times in the past week, um, we had a red alert. Uh, forget about the southern part of Israel, which is it's, it's nonsense and a joke. Um, Palestinians want attention in Gaza. Hamas cannot explain to his own people his shortcoming. So he's trying to divert the fire to Israel. And, uh, and so he's shooting rockets that hit nowhere and do nothing. And uh, they just send kites and they send balloons. And... Uh, and um, that's um, that's what happened. Um, excuse me, just a minute. Excuse me, I'm busy right now. Thank you very much. So uh, uh, this is uh, so. Forget about the south, the northern part of Israel. It's what's important. I, I, I've been telling you for the longest time that the eyes of the Israeli army are on the northern border. Twice in the past. 10 days, uh, stuff was flying from Syria. Now, none of those times it was aimed towards Israel. Uh, one Syrian pilot uh, did a mistake and entered uh, into Israeli territory, understood his mistake, turned around, but it was too late for him because we already shut down that Sukhoi uh, Russian-made air airplane and he uh, crashed on Syrian soil. We sent a clear message to the Syrians whether intentionally or unintentionally, no one enters our territory. But the second thing is, um, a couple rockets also flew all the way from Syria uh, and landed in the Sea of Galilee. And those rockets, by the way, were not aimed towards Israel. They were fired by ISIS to hit Assad's um, strongholds. Um, and, and the fights uh, between the rebels and Assad forces and ISIS in the middle these fights are getting closer and closer to Israel, to the Israeli border right now. That is why Benjamin Netanyahu had agreed to have Russian presence on our border. And that was part of the essence of the Helsinki summit, to uh, basically agree that the Russians will be there. The Russians sent their uh, foreign minister, Ser Sergei Lavrov, and the head of the Russian army to meet with the prime minister just last week, the highest level delegation ever and uh, that tells you how how very seriously Putin is looking at the um, coordination with Israel now make no mistake although Israel is actually pleased with the Russian presence on the border and we even agreed to that definitely as believers we know it's a mistake but as believers, we also know it had to happen. So it's really not a mistake. It's prophecy fulfilled. You see, we as believers, we must understand that things and decisions being made today by world leaders, to them, they sound rational, they sound logical, they sound necessary. And those decisions they take today, we who know the Word of God, we understand where it's going to lead to. 
Now, if you go today to the Israeli secret service or the, to the Israeli security services and tell them, hey, by the way, I know that Russia is going to invade Israel, they'll put you in straitjacket. Of course, they don't see what we see. And you can, you, you can be surprised if you want, thinking, wait a minute, Amir, um, aren't the Israelis reading the Bible? It's one thing to read the Bible. It's another thing to believe. And even the disciples 2,000 years ago read and never believed. This is why Jesus told the two disciples on the road to Damascus, on the road to um, Emmaus, O foolish ones and slow of heart to believe that which was spoken by the prophets. You've been hearing the words of the prophets every Shabbat in the synagogue, but you never really believe that. So yes, the Israelis might know the prophecies, they might read the words of the prophet, but they don't really believe in it as much as we do, because you need the Holy Spirit. You need to be shaken by the Holy Spirit. You need to love the Lord, and you need to have the Holy Spirit in order to take the Word of God literally. That's the thing. So I'm telling you folks, read my lips. Israel is okay and actually approved the Russian presence on its northern border. I know it, I, it, it sounds almost unimaginable that I am saying these words, but that's exactly what needs to happen. And we are the generation Mark my words, no other generation in a history and no other in the future will ever get to see what we see. We are watching the sovereign state of Israel asking Russia to be at its border. Isn't that amazing? Regarding the Turks, um, you know that they just released the American pastor and they didn't really release him to go back home. They released him to a house arrest. Uh, President Erdogan lied to President Trump. He lied to him. He actually told President Trump, if you convince Israel to release a Turkish woman who was arrested for having ties with Hamas, then we will release the pastor. Is President Trump asked Benjamin Netanyahu, would you do me that favor and release that woman? Prime Minister Netanyahu had agreed. We released that woman, and guess what? The Turks broke their promise, and the tension is rising between Turkey and America. Tension is also rising between Iran and America. You've seen the exchange of tweets between the American president and the Iranian president and foreign minister. They supposedly are ready for a war, although they know they will never be able to win against America. But what we're watching is how the dictatorships are despising President Trump and how the rest of the world is actually aligning with him. Look at the Europeans, those chickens who were so angry with Trump saying that he's going to increase the tariffs on, on, on European, on European uh, um, products. Look, with their tail between their legs, they ran to the White House and had agreed to zero tariffs and had agreed to increase their, um, uh, their purchasing of soybeans from the United States. What a champion he was in the way he conducted himself against them. And I'm telling you, the world learns to respect him. And the, the world's understand the days of taking advantage of America are over. But you know, and I know, and and in, in, it came to me last night, you know, I, I don't sleep well. And much of, a lot of the reasons I don't sleep well is because I, I get those flash, flashes. Um, last night I was thinking, you know, the media is so after Trump and they're trying to, of course, destroy him. But I was thinking to myself, if God forbid he's not winning again and the Democrats are winning, that's the end of America because they will undo everything he did and they will expedite, they will make it faster, the process of America's end, of America's uh, complete annihilation. 
And maybe that's why America is not going to be in, in Bible prophecy standing by Israel. I'm not sure. I'm just telling the Christians, just as I said two years ago, I'm going to tell the Christians again for these midterm elections as well as for the next presidential elections. God is telling us to do our part and He will do His. If we show up and vote, He'll do His part. And for the first time, Christians got up and voted and that's what made the difference. Now, if you're going to be locked up in this conspiracy theory that Trump is actually not working for uh, the right reasons and he is, you know, some sort of a, 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 a wolf in sheep clothing, then you're going to get the Democrats back in the White House and they are going to destroy you and your country forever. It's not going to be even a reversible process. It will be completely irreversible. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping and praying that American Christians will stop this nonsense of coming against their own president and will align themselves behind a man that showed himself so far to be the best thing that has ever happened to Christianity in America and to Israel. That's all I can say. So we've seen what's going on in the Middle East. We've seen the, the fights going all the way. ISIS has come back to life in southern Syria. Believe it or not, both the Syrians and the Russians never really intended to destroy ISIS. because ISIS was the reason they could always blame uh, so they could come, come into Syria. Do you know that the, Rus the uh, Syrian president bought oil from ISIS, half price? ISIS controlled everything east of the Euphrates and, 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 and he bought oil for half price. ISIS did business with Assad. And just about a week ago, Assad, in order to make sure that the Druze in Syria are staying loyal to him, now when he's recapturing the rest of the country, he unleashed ISIS, allowed them to enter into some Druze villages and towns, and they massacred hundreds of women, children, and men in their own houses. A great massacre of the Druze took place in the past week, and nobody's telling you about it. And all of that, not just under the auspices of the Syrian regime, but with the encouragement of the Syrian regime, and that was sending a clear message to the Druze, we're back here, and you better be loyal to us. For the last seven years, you didn't know who to support. I'm the Lord here. I'm the man here. I'm the ru ruler here. And if you're not going to support me, I will never protect you from ISIS. It, it is horrendous what these people are doing to each other. And all that Israel does, Israel is helping to the southern Syrians. We even help the white helmet people the people who came to help evacuating Syrians. Now, I, I, let's not get into whether they're good people or bad people. These are civilians that came to help other civilians uh, to be taken out of the rubble uh, in Syria. And we have uh, not only allowed them to go through Israel into Jordan, but we have assisted them. We sent buses, we loaded them, and we, tr we brought them through our country all the way to Jordan so they will be safely um, arriving in Jordan uh, without being killed because of all the fighting that is going on over there. Israel is the last country that is causing trouble or problems to the scumbags over there. But the world will not tell you that, nor will the world show you that. That's what we have right now. Uh, I also want to warn you, ladies and gentlemen, against the Jerusalem Post. Um, Many of you, too many of you, are relying on that newspaper as a source of information. The Jerusalem Post has many liberals writing there. They have their agenda. They don't like Prime Minister Netanyahu. They will try to bash him and smear his name any way they can. And they also want to try and somehow convince you for example, that Saudi Arabia is not on the side of Israel right now. They just came up with this thing that 
the king of Saudi Arabia said that when it comes to the Palestinians, he's actually aligning himself with Iran. That's baloney. We already know that Trump is not doing one single thing without consulting with the Saudis when it comes to the peace plan. Because the idea of the peace plan is to have the Saudis having a normal relationship with Israel as part of it. But the Jerusalem Post will, will tell you the difference. That's why be very careful to shape your understanding of current events in the Middle East based on the Jerusalem Post or based on politically motivated news sources. It is important that you know that, you know, probably 50% 50 50 of the time they might be giving you news, but all of their analysis, and they've been wrong so many times, so many times, they've been saying bad things, wrong things, uh, 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 and then they never ever retracted their words, but those those, I guess, um, those posts will be vanishing from their website. So I'm just telling you. This is why, by the way, I do not rely on any English language news source. Nothing. They are all contaminated. I have my own sources, and I've got also sources where I am watching live what is going on in the Arab countries around me. So I'm well informed with what is going on around us, as well as, of course, Israel. And the Jerusalem Post is sensationalism, and it's cheap. So just know, if that's what you're relying your understanding uh, uh, on Middle East update, then you are making a very big mistake, because it is controlled by liberals who hate the conservative agenda. And I will tell you, Benjamin Netanyahu just passed uh, the legislation uh, regarding the nation-state law, where he said it is about time that we legislate a law that is telling the world that we are a Jewish state, Hebrew is our national language, Jerusalem is our capital. That's it. And if you've got a problem with that, then just go and deal with it, because that's it. And people are attacking him. They're saying, how dare you say that? Well, ladies and gentlemen, last time I checked in, in Turkey, Turkish is their language, although they have other minorities. Last time I checked, Istanbul is their big city, but Ankara is their capital, and nobody says a word. Last time I checked, they've got a flag, and uh, they know exactly what nation lives in their country, and nobody is debating it. So Erdogan is calling us Nazis when we say that Israel is the land of the Jewish people. Ladies and gentlemen, last night I met with the great, great grandsons, the great grandsons, excuse me, of Lord Balfour, who was, by the way, Scottish, he wasn't even English. And Lord Balfour wrote the declaration that later on was adopted by the League of Nations in the San Remo con conference in 1920 and later on was given to England in the mandate in 1922, 96 years ago, Lord Balfour wrote that Israel is the homeland of the Jewish people. We're not saying that we are the homeland of the Jewish people based on our own feelings only. It is anchored in international law. And if you don't recognize the international law for that case, then that's your problem. Well, we're not breaking the law. We're actually reiterating the law. We're making sure. And, and you know, I just saw a video this morning. I told you I'm up since 4 o'clock. And uh, where an Israeli Arab member of the parliament is traveling the world telling them, we're working for two countries, two states. One will be Palestinian and one will not be Jewish. That's what she said. One will be Palestinian only, and one will not be Jewish. It will be Jews and Arabs and others, but it will not be Jewish. So they want an Arab state, but not a Jewish state. So anyone who tells you this garbage of two state, remember, they don't want a Jewish state and an Arab state. They want an Arab state and a non-Jewish state. That's what they want. So Netanyahu says, before they will mess up your mind, let's make sure that it is anchored in our books of laws that Israel 
is a democratic Jewish country. And that's the land of Israel. It's the land of the Jewish people. That's the Declaration of Independence. And we're called Israel. That's our country's name. Jerusalem is our capital. Hebrew is our official language. And Hatikva is our national anthem. That's it. If you don't like it, you can move somewhere else. If you like it, then here you are. You're more than welcome to live with us. But that's who we are. And if you will attempt to change it, you will be breaking the law. That's what it's all about. That's the nation. I, I think it's very symbolic that at the 70th anniversary of Israel, we make it very clear to the whole world who we are and what we do. I, and, and so, again, I want to remind all of you folks, all of my messages are censored by YouTube. YouTube have removed you from the subscription to Behold Israel. And, and hundreds of people wrote us that they found out that they are not subscribed anymore. That explains why everybody runs to Facebook and then we don't see the views on YouTube. Go back to YouTube and resubscribe to our YouTube channel because you have probably been removed by, by YouTube and do the same on Facebook because they're all doing the same thing. Twitter is doing it, Facebook. And now, I want to tell you something. <laughs> A lot of uh, people that were supposedly so popular um, lost millions of, of followers overnight because all of that was fake. But it, it's very interesting that in my case, of course, we're not paying for subscribers and we're not paying for followers. Anyone who ever followed us or subscribed on us did it on his own free will. But it's mostly the conservative channels that have been targeted by YouTube and Facebook and they have been just deleting you and then unfriending you or um, unsubscribing you without you even knowing. So I'm just telling you, so just you be aware of that because we noticed that and we want to warn you. Again, so I want to tell you, my book is already for sale on our website, beholdisrael.org. You can order it right now. Those of you who want to order it on Amazon, you won't get the book before October. It is for pre-sale now, but the book itself will not get to the bookstores before September or October. So if you want a book now, throughout August, just you can buy it online from our website, BeholdIsrael.org, or from our app. And in September, um, you can buy it also from uh, in Southern California where I'll be teaching. And you can also buy it uh, during our conference in Minnesota. To all of our Canadian friends, I have good news. We are going to have this year a conference for Canada, everyone, we are inviting you to come to a conference that is going to be called Awaiting His Return. The, country, the uh, conference will be held in Toronto. More details will be given to you on our YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and um, website. Um, and uh, you're going to know exactly the date in November and the venue but I just want to tell you guys, we never forgot about you. I may not be there on uh, September 22nd in British Columbia, but we are going to have a great conference. Myself and Pastor Barry Stagner from Southern California will be there, the speakers at a conference called Awaiting His Return. This is going to be a great conference, and we're expecting people from all over Canada. So if you want to come and listen to our uh, messages, please mark your calendar. It's going to be probably November 10th this year in Toronto. More details will be given to you online and expect our, uh, and then for all the Canadians, for more information, write us to Canada at BeholdIsrael.org. Guys, thank you. I'm sorry I was a little emotional in the beginning of this update, but you know, I'm a human being and you know, uh, these things really touch my heart when I see God in such a great way um, displaying His 
he is um, um, faithfulness to Israel and to us, the believers here. So, um, yes, some of you are asking me, I will be in September in Chino Hills. Me and Pastor Jack Hibbs will host another Happening Now. Um, and it's going to be wonderful because the focus on that one will be on the salvation of Israel. We're going to mostly talk about that. What is going on with the Jewish people? What will happen to them? And how can we, the believers, pray and what we can do? Uh, in, in the whole thing. What is the Bible saying about them? That's going to be because we will teach on Yom Kippur, on the Day of Atonement. And that's a symbolic day, I believe, for us to be teaching on Israel's repentance, on Israel's acceptance, and on Israel's salvation. So get ready in Calvary Chino Hills for the next happening now in the beginning of September. The rest of you guys, we're going, I'm going to speak in Calvary Chapel Tustin, Calvary Chapel East Anaheim, and of course we will be hosting a conference in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Um, and at the end of September, we will be in Minnesota for the great large prophecy conference of Understanding the Times of Olive Tree Ministries in Jan Markel. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you for Bearing with me, I'm in the last place on my journey back home. And let's conclude this with the ironic blessing, okay? Yevarechecha Adonai veishmerecha. Yaer Adonai panavelecha veichuneka. Yisa Adonai panavelecha veyasem lecha shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance towards you and give you peace. That peace that surpasses all understanding that the world cannot give nor the world cannot even understand. It's the peace that only can come from the Prince of Peace, the Lord of Peace, who can give you peace now and forever here and everywhere. And it's in the name of that Prince of Peace, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, our salvation, we pray. Amen and Amen. Thank you. God bless you. I love you. Shalom from Oakland, New Zealand. This is a great country. I'm going to be back here next year for a national conference, one event. We're inviting all New Zealanders to attend it's going to be great. I am super excited. Love you guys. Thank you. God bless you. And shalom from Oakland, New Zealand. Bye-bye.